Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you Monday, September the 28th, the year's 2020. Let's talk trading, back testing, and bumblebees. I just want you to know that these videos are for educational purposes only, and your results may differ from mine. Back testing and bumblebees. What do bumblebees have to do with trading? Well, not much, actually. But for this discussion, um, I think it's relevant. If any of you know anything about physics and bumblebees, you know that bumblebees can't fly. Why? Because you back tested it on paper and you did all the um, aerodynamics and calculated the lift, the thrust, the forces, gravity, etc. And basically, the uh, wings of the Bumblebee are too small, so it can't fly. Yet, in the real world, there's bumblebees out there flying. In fact, you may have even been stung by one, right? What's I got to do with, with it? Well, you see, in back testing, um, people say, well, you know what? That Walmart method doesn't work. Um, I back tested it, and, you know, well, I didn't, well, I back tested it, but I changed a few things and it didn't work. And then I pointed out to the trader, I go, well, you know, you, you changed the, uh, the parameters. Um, so, uh, well then he, he changed them and then it still doesn't work. I go, well, you know, we only trade during certain hours of the day. Well, then he changed them and it still didn't work, but you see, you have to understand something. The Walmart method, we've never said it was a, a um, basically a mechanical method that um, you can code into an EA and be profitable. You know, on the one hand, I do say you have to be like a trained monkey and you and take the trades. But on the other hand, you have to be a, uh, a trader and after you do it for a while you'll start to pick up on things sometimes consciously sometimes unconsciously and you'll know like even though you can see a setup you go well based on uh, what it's been doing all day i'm not taking that trade because it's hit that line you know um 10 times and only once has it gone up where i could make profit it kept it's reversing so it's not working right now well how are you going to do that in a program? I mean, the program, you'd have to definitely use some type of AI, uh, which I think is beyond the capabilities of MT4. So it's things like that. So um, that's why I say you don't back test. What you do is you look and see how many times you had an opportunity to take profit at a certain uh, level. In fact, I even wrote one of the donationals for 2020 uh, does that, but I don't want to get bogged down into that. But one thing I will mention when you're trading on any one particular trade, put your stop loss in. Don't lose more than you're willing to lose on a particular trade. And, you know, brain management, no fear, no regret. And on the money management, you know, take the profit before the market takes it back. In fact, um, you know, I, I put in a, um, a um, call it a rule. But now, if I get up two pips, I'm moving the break even to, or the stop up to break even plus one. Do I get stopped out? Yeah, but I don't lose. <laughs> Not those trades. And then somebody's going to come along. Yeah, but if you take one seven pip loss, you know, you're going to have to have seven winners, seven one pip winners to make up. Yeah, but the only thing is, is sometimes I might have a 20 pip winner and then more than makes up for the loss. So, um, you know, you have to look at the total picture here. Um, for example, right here at the 60 line, you, you may have uh, taken that trade, hit, See, did that actually hit 60? Let me expand this a bit. Where was it? I don't think it actually hit 60. Hit 58. 
but chances are 58.6, maybe the ask did hit that. And if you triggered, maybe you took a seven pip loss. And then boom, you get back in. Well, look at this on that candle, you had a 30 pip win. Case closed. Does it happen like that all the time? Of course not. But it does happen. And I think I mentioned on Friday I was going to talk to you guys or show you something about the M15. Well, notice here the uh, range. We've got the last four hours are all over 10 pips, 17 or higher. Now, today is kind of an unusual day. I'll give you that. But I've been noticing that these M15 candles um, during the hours that um, I like to trade um, have been pretty nice in size, in range. So for today, we've got daily, we've got 179 pip range, the 80 percentile. You can see we're 72 pips off the high and 170 or 108 pips off the low. So obviously the rats have enjoyed their meals today. Now, there was a trader out there that was asking me about the size. They wanted to change the size here um, in the fonts, in the inputs. Um, I don't work with these. These are the fonts that change this stuff, not here. Um, I can't see any smaller, and I just didn't make the code so this could be changed. I made it about the same size as the price. So if you want to have at it, you've got the source code. And let's see, going back here on the weekly, you can see we still haven't filled that gap. There was, and we haven't filled this gap here, but the other ones have filled quite a huge move. I do recall telling people yesterday um, to anticipate that weekly pivot being taken out. You can see here the daily range is just huge. So it'll be interesting to see if we break out of this of the opening week's range here. And I do believe last week I mentioned about, you know, price being in the uh, rat zone, in the monthly rat zone, 20 pips off that monthly bottom. And you can see here, there's been a huge move off out of that monthly rat zone. Only 384 pips off the uh, yearly open. Yesterday, I think it was like 448 or 484 when I made the video last night, my time. And we're in the weekly inside bar now, right here in this area. And I only shaded one. I, maybe I could shade another one just to show you guys how to do that. Color shade. Let's pick different color and shade inside bar true and there you go range the pound I guess there was some Brexit news broke out of the uh, previous day's high huge huge move anybody catching that and we never hit the pivot here. So pivot faders would, would have missed out on this trade. Rats, once again, enjoying a feast here, especially the red rats. The green rats couldn't have feasted because there wasn't enough range right here. But as you can see, the red rats enjoyed a feast. And there's weekly R1, there's the weekly pivot. So anybody who was trading the, towards the weekly pivot was paid off very well. And the missed pivots, and that's on the weekly. You see we still have, now we just have the one here from this month and the one here from July of this year. And if we switch back to the daily, you see we have a missed pivot here. So we've got four missed pivots this month on the daily. 
wick zone popped right out of it huge move that was the only move it paid off nicely back to the uh once again trading chart here you can see we crossed above the 50 but we can switch back over to the one hour chart here it opened right on that 40 line crossed the 50 crossed the 60 and then there was a trader that was um telling me i guess it's more about bumblebees that you know after three bars this bar is no more likely to be green than it is to be red um well if that's what you want to believe um you can go right ahead and believe that um not gonna argue i just know what works for me and after three in a row i start looking for reversals and even here one two three in a row i look for a reversal four in a row reversal five in a row reversal six in a row reversal and then the big reversal here so yeah these are small trades but I just start looking for these reversals. And the thing is, if you play it reversing out of the low, this was the only bar that triggered. And sometimes that's how you play these. So one, two, three, if it didn't break that low, or sometimes I'll take the midpoint, or sometimes I'll just trade out of the wick zone. It just depends on how price moves. So if price gives you a move to the upside and then starts coming through the wick zone. That's what I look for. So here you can see it cross below this high into the wick zone, closed in that wick zone area, opened, moved up back into, the, into double wick zone and then came out of this wick zone, came out of that wick zone, and then came out of the bottom. Opportunities to take pips. That's all I'm looking for. So, I mean, once again, these are statistics. This is not probability. You can say, well, it's a 50-50 chance. It's not. It's not a probability. It's not a coin toss. It's not a roulette wheel. Okay? This is, these are people trading and they're going to do what they do, and it's not going to be the same each and every time. And that's why there's a market. So this is another one of those. You can back test it all you want, but it doesn't matter. You have to be in the game, in the moment, with money on the line, and then you'll find out whether or not it works for you. And that's something that people don't understand, because when you've got money on the line, you've... Unfortunately, we have emotion built in, and we shouldn't do that, but we're human, we, so we do the best we can. But tonight, today was a really nice day. Once again, just trading at these horizontal lines, taking what you can, not being too greedy, following your plan, you know, putting it in place um should be able to be successful but uh, once again these videos for educational purposes only and your results may differ from mine but there's just certain things that you will come to know after trading and it's just like that one trader who wanted to have three different methods i said no pick one method pick one pair so for example been trading a pound now since about february March, I know it likes to launch from the 40. I know it gets hung up around the 60s. Doesn't matter. You can see here, back here, 2760, it got hung up. You know, 2860, it keeps coming back to that area. So, fellow traders, just remember one thing. It's not what you trade. It's how you trade it. So go out there and drain the banks. The rumpled one over and out.